Hey everyone, this is Christian and today I'd like to show you some of the new updates on my famous boilerplates repo on GitHub. At least I call it famous because it's by far my most start project on GitHub where I'm collecting many useful templates and config examples for all our favorite technologies we are covering here, such as Docker Compose files, Kubernetes manifests, Ansible playbooks, Terraform files and many many more all made publicly available to you. Some of you might already know this repo, some others don't, but no matter, it's definitely interesting for all of you because I've made some pretty cool changes to this lately, such as adding many new Docker Compose files from my last videos and a brand new dependency management system using the Renovate app by Mant, the sponsor of today's video. So that will help us to stay up to date with all of the latest container image releases for any Docker and Kubernetes templates. This is super cool and we'll also talk about some of the best practices and also challenges I had implementing the dependency management, especially when it comes to container images. So I'll share everything I've learned with you from those updates and it's going to be helpful for your personal home lab projects managed in Git as well. One thing though I want to mention at this point before we start, because there's really a lot of effort that went into making this boilerplates repository and I wouldn't be able to do this without your help. So a big thanks goes out to all of the contributors in our community, foremost Feom, who became probably the leading part of our community support and he's helping me out so much to manage this whole project repository, so a huge thanks to you Feom. By the way, if you want to become a contributor and help out working on all those free resources for our community as well, maybe just adding a few of your personal Docker Compose templates or correcting some stupid mistakes that I've made, then let's have a chat on Discord. I'm always open for any new suggestions and I really appreciate all your help. But yeah, I know I talked enough, so let's get back to work and let me first of all show you where and how to find this famous boilerplates repository that I'm talking about. So first of all, just go to my personal GitHub profile. You will find a link to this in all of the description boxes of my video tutorials. And then you just need to scroll down to write-ups and tutorials where you find links to all the GitHub repositories that I'm sharing with you for free. So there is a link to the boilerplates repo and here in this repository I've created directly directories for all the different applications or technologies that we want to uh, store or share templates and config examples for. Let us first go into the Docker Compose uh, project directory because this is where all of the just recent changes are happening here. So here you will find uh, Compose projects for any applications that I just recently did videos on, just as Authentic, Bind9, uh, Grafana, Home Assistant, and also some others where I didn't make videos yet, such as Pyhole, but I might just do that in the future at some point. Also, Traffic is uh, pretty useful because Traffic is a pretty complicated app to get started with, I believe. And here the Docker Compose template will help you with a basic not too complex, but a pretty simple and flexible template that you can use to deploy traffic in your own, in your own home lab. And also I've added a config directory for a basic traffic configuration that you can use. I've tried to make all the necessary things as uncommented lines, so such as entry points for web and web secure and some other optional things or things that you need to customize. I've always added uh, comment blocks for that with some descriptions and things you need to do. So I think this is pretty useful and helpful if you just want to deploy applications. And let us just do that together. Uh, for example, let's go into the nginx directory, which is an open source and free web server that you can use to run websites or proxy things, whatever you want to do with that. And you can just go in here, just grab the Docker Compose YAML file, copy everything in here, or clone the repository and copy the necessary files to a new project directory on your server. So then you can just go in here, make your customizations to this file. You can upload the website to the data folder that I've mounted as a persistent volume mount point into the containers file system. And also you can change the configuration of the web server to add any customizations to it. But that will just work as a basic template. So if you're ready to go, you copy the project, you can just go into the folder and run it with a Docker Compose up. And now you got yourself a free and open source web server deployed. So simple and easy as that. But you can also deploy more complex environments with that. For example, if you want to create your own IT stack, for example, deploy Uptime Kuma together with a traffic reverse proxy, you can also do that. Create your own Docker Compose file and just take parts of the boilerplates depending on your requirements. 
So here, for example, I just copy the traffic example configuration directory in here that contains all this stuff, as well as parts of the Docker Compose project of traffic and put it in my uptime Kuma stack. So here I can also make changes like I don't need to expose the ports for this application. I also don't need the traffic dashboard and those things I also don't need. But maybe I need the traffic labels so that I can easily expose its application using the traffic reverse proxy. Just as a quick demonstration how easy this is. Of course you need some general understanding of traffic and all the other applications, but hey, that's why I'm making the videos, so you can use that as write-ups after watching the videos to deploy this to your home lab as well. Okay, so that's basically everything you need to know to use my Docker Compose templates for your own home lab projects. One thing you might have noticed, which is a little different from any other tutorials you might find elsewhere, that I generally avoid using the Docker image tag latest. Because the latest tag is non-deterministic, which means it can mean different things. A quick example, when you're pulling down the latest container image of the Nginx web server, this usually points to the current released version of the application. But of course, it is updated from time to time and when there is a new version of Nginx released, the latest tag will then point to that new version instead. If you want to update the application on your device, the image needs to be pulled down again and the container needs to be recreated with that new image. The problem is, you never really know what version the device has pulled down before if you're using the latest tag because it can mean anything and you might run into some ugly compatibility issues or other bad surprises that can occur with application updates. Uh, we had this problem discussed just lately in one of my YouTube live streams where I've shown you the change log of the new Traffic Load Balancer version 3. Traffic has created a huge migration guide you need to work through when updating from version 2 to version 3. Now if you had used the latest tag in the Traffic Compose file a while ago, which was probably on version 2.x, and you're now redeploying the same Compose project again, this will get you the new version free and potentially breaks your existing config or it even prevents traffic from starting at all. And that's why I think using the latest tag in your Compose files generally is a bad idea because you have zero control of the updating procedure. If you're using a so-called pin tagged version instead, you can always see in your Compose files so what exact version the application is currently on. And if you want to upgrade to a newer version, you have to do that manually by changing the image tag. So that is much safer for upgrading, but of course managing those application updates is not simple. And one big challenge was when we're using the pinned version tags everywhere in the boilerplates repository, how the hell do we stay up to date with all of the applications? Because there are so many new versions of applications released and I didn't want to check all the different compose files every single day and compare whether there is a new version released and when I have to change an image tag. So a tool that would automate this update procedure for us or at least just notify us about a new version tag would be so much help. And this challenge is exactly what I've talked about with the guys at Ment because they have created a very powerful tool called Renovate that is exactly made for that task. In simple terms, Renovate scans your entire Git repository with all the files it contains, identifies dependencies and automatically opens a pull request with all the necessary updates you just have to merge in your repo. It works great for all the container images in your Compose files or also Kubernetes manifest as well, but it also supports many other technologies, even programming languages like Python, Node.js and many more. So this is not just a great tool for our boilerplates repository, it is also used by professional software developers to manage updates and dependencies, so it's a great technology to learn more about. You could also think about any other possible use cases, for example, keeping your home lab projects up to date when you are managing your Docker Compose projects in a Git repository. By the way, if you want to use Renovate for your own Git repositories, this is where it can get a bit tricky because you can install and set it up in many different ways. There's an open source CLI which you can install for free in your home lab and connect it to various types of Git management systems like GitHub, GitLab, etc. There are also free cloud hosted versions available on Bitbucket and GitHub Cloud, plus the self hosted versions meant Renovate Community and an Enterprise Edition. 
Of course, we will take a closer look at the self-hosted version of Renovate in an upcoming video and learn how to connect it to a self-hosted Git platform with GitLab. So that's definitely gonna be an interesting project. So there are many different ways to deploy Renovate depending on what is your requirement, but the most simple and easiest solution to just get Renovate working on GitHub without having to install anything is by just using the Renovate GitHub app, which is totally free and it gives you all the necessary features and functionalities to manage updates and dependencies in your GitHub repositories. And that is exactly the deployment method that I've decided to use for our boilerplates repository. To install and set up Renovate for your GitHub repository, you just have to go to the GitHub Marketplace and search for Renovate. And then you can configure this for your GitHub account. You set up a new plan, which is totally free, select your account and install it. If you've done that, you can configure Renovate to only watch on specific repositories in your account or to all repositories. And once you have configured your repositories, it will create a pull request on those repos that you first have to merge into your code. So for example, this is the pull request that Renovate created for our boilerplates repo. Uh, you can see it already detected all the packages for the Docker Compose files, the Terraform files. And now that it started detecting those packages, it will scan the GitHub repository from time to time and automatically create pull requests with necessary changes to the dependencies in those files. How exactly that's working, I will show you later in a minute. I just want to go through the example configuration file because once you merged the example renovate.json config in your repository, you can also customize this application to do anything you like. For example, me and Feon, we've taken some time customizing the default renovate.json file to do exactly what we wanted to do. Because we had one problem, especially with the databases in the Docker Compose projects. And the problem is that databases like MariaDB, MySQL or Postgres, they like to include heavy changes in some of their major updates. So that means that whenever you are deploying a database and you just update the image tag from version 15.x to version 60.x, that could mean some drastic changes and also manual migration steps that you first need to do. So what we want to do is we want to use Renovate for automatic updates, but for those very specific applications where database updates could mean that an application stops working. So this is where we want to disable Renovate. But depending on what are your requirements or if you have any problems with a specific application, updates or dependencies, you can configure literally everything that you want. Renovate has a pretty good documentation about all those configuration updates, so I could just recommend you to check this out. I will put you the link in the description box, of course, and there you can find explanations for all those different settings. It is pretty complex, but don't worry, we will go into much detail about configuring Renovate in my dedicated tutorial video about that. So once that is out, don't forget to like and subscribe if you don't want to miss that, and then we will go through some of those examples together. Now to just uh, let you know how Renovate helps us to stay up to date with the boilerplates repositories. So for example, there's a new update on the Docker Compose file traffic, for example. So if we go in here, you can see I've used the pinned tagged version 3.0.4. Before it was set to 3.0.3, .3, but Renovate suggested this change once Traffic released this new application version. You can see this in the pull request history, so when we go to the closed ones, you can see that Renovate, that was actually the last uh, action of the Renovate bot 15 hours ago. So that it uh, detected that Traffic has updated the application from version 3.0.3 .3 to 3.0.4. So in this pull request, you can see it automatically commits the changes that are necessary. So you can see in that uh, docker compose.yaml file in the Traffic directory, it removed that line here and just changed it to the new version. And then you literally don't have to do anything you uh, just go to the pull request, you manually check if everything is okay, if Renovate has done everything correctly, and you can just click on Merge, and then your Docker Compose project is up to date. So this is a pretty cool change that is going to simplify so many uh, updating tasks and update management in those template files that, of course, we want to stay up to date with the latest changes, but we don't want to manually go and mess up something, so Renovate is really a huge help for that specific task. And it could be useful for your own personal home lab projects as well. If you're storing Docker Compose files in Git repositories, just add, add the Renovate bot to this and stay up to date to the latest version and still have some form of manual control over what exactly is updated and when 
when you're merging the new version into your uh, production environment. All right, so that's it about all the new updates on my Boilerplates Reaper on GitHub. I hope you found that useful to see what's going on behind the scenes and I've got you a bit excited about using Renovate in your home lab. As I said, we're going to cover it in another detailed video, but I just need to do a few things before that, like setting up a self-hosted Git platform. <laughs> I've not fully decided exactly which I'm gonna use. Should it be Git T or GitLab? But I will keep you updated for sure. Thanks everyone for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.